What's up guys, my name is Brandon and a week after the release of Beta 8, Apple returns today with the RC build or the release candidate build of iOS 14.5 for both registered developers and for public beta testers. Now, along with this update, we also got the RC build for iPadOS 14.5, watchOS 7.4, macOS Big Sur 11.3, and tvOS 14.5. And these releases, of course, come right after Apple's spring loaded event, which was definitely loaded with new products. And we'll talk about those near the end of this video. And of course, special shout out to everyone who was in the live stream earlier today during this Apple event. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It was a lot of fun. And if you wanna watch it, it is unlisted still here on YouTube. I will have that linked down in the description below if you wanna see my reaction to all of Apple's new product announcements. But you're here for iOS 14.5 RC, so let's talk about it. So first off, the size of this update you can see here came in at 4.69 gigabytes on my iPhone 12. And the size for the release candidate or you know previously known as the GM is always going to be very large because it's rewriting the entire OS as a fresh install. So you can see there we have 4.69 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this RC build here. So it goes to our settings, general about 14.5. You can see the final build there is 18E199. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that the modem firmware is 1.62.11. Now this build should be the same as the final public release when it releases next week. However, there is also a slight possibility of seeing an RC2 sometime later this week but we'll talk more about that and the release dates and everything near the end of this video like i normally do so anyways what's new here in the rc build and obviously there's not going to be a lot changed from beta 8 to the rc build however there were a couple of things that i noticed and the first one was actually a new splash screen inside of music i'm not sure if this has shown up for anybody before this rc build but I got this new splash screen only inside of the music application and it shows what's new in Apple Music. It shows the lyrics sharing, the city charts, and the made for you in the library. So basically just giving us a rundown of what's new here in 14.5 in music. I'm kind of surprised that it didn't mention these swipe gestures or anything like that because those are some of the bigger features in terms of overall usability. Uh, in my opinion, but nonetheless, they did have that in there. I did also notice something new in the Find My application as well. Just a minor change here. If we go into the Find My application and go to the Items tab right here, and then go to Add Item, you will see down at the bottom, it says Other Supported Item. It did not say that in Beta 8. So I'm gonna pull up Beta 8 over here on the left-hand side and go into Find My and then go to the same section right here. And if we go to add item, you can see there is no other supported item right there. So that is new, something just very minor that I found that's new here in iOS 14.5, the RC builds. So this is what it's gonna be like in the final release. And then also if we go to identify found item right here, you can see there is an extra paragraph added here in the RC and the final release. And it says, if you found an AirTag, you can learn more by holding the top of your iPhone over it until a notification appears. So that kind of gives us a glimpse as to how the AirTags are going to work. So really cool. And obviously it makes sense why Apple would not add that paragraph until after the Apple event and the RC build because it pretty much tells us that it's called the AirTag and kind of how to use it. Now, one thing that has unfortunately not been changed here in the RC build is if we go to our settings, privacy and tracking, my app tracking transparency feature is still grayed out here in settings and I'm not sure why. So again, this does have to do with your iCloud account so you can sign out of iCloud and back in, but that seems to be a bug and I'm not sure why it is still grayed out for me here on the RC or the final release. So not too sure what's going on there. I thought it would be fixed in RC, but it is still not. But aside from that, we did also get the release notes with this update that shows us everything that has changed here in iOS and iPadOS 14.5. Now keep in mind, I will mention every single smaller change and go further into depth about these features in 14.5 in my public release video that's coming next week when it's out for everybody. So in this video, I'm just going to briefly cover over some of these changes here because there are some additional ones here that we haven't covered before and basically just tell you guys what's new. Uh, and in that video next week, I'll go more into depth with it. So of course we have the unlock iPhone with Apple Watch feature, which we talked about here and you guys pretty much know about now. Then below that we have AirTag and Find My. So here are some new things added in the RC. So also I just wanted to point out, it says AirTag. So Apple refers to AirTags as AirTag. It's just singular. I know we've all been saying it plural, but it is singular, so AirTag. So it says support for AirTag to keep track of and find your important items like your keys, wallet, backpack, and more. And of course, down here it shows the new feature as well that Apple showed during the event 
called Precision Finding, and it says it uses visual, audible, and haptic feedback to guide you directly to your nearby AirTag using ultra wideband provided by the U1 chip on iPhone 11 and iPhone 12 models. So to utilize this feature, you do need an iPhone 11 or 12, although the AirTag will work for an iPhone 6S and later. It also says that the AirTag can be located by playing a sound via the built-in speaker. And then lost mode notifies you when your AirTag is found and you can enter a phone number where you can be contacted. So really cool features there for the AirTags and the Find My application. I really like the lost mode and of course the precision finding feature. That's really gonna be really cool and I will definitely be showing you guys how those work in a real world scenario when I get my hands on them. And then we get mentions of the new emoji and also the new Siri voices. Of course, we have two brand new Siri voices here in 14.5. It also talks about group FaceTime and emergency contacts being able to be called by asking Siri. Also the app tracking transparency feature is showed here inside of the release notes. And then Apple Music shows some of the changes here. We also get mentions of podcasts, which Apple did today announce podcast subscriptions. So we are going to have paid podcasts now inside of the podcast application. Now, when I went in here, I did not see anything indicating anything paid. I did look for it. I did not see any paid you know, podcasts in here at all. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm sure that'll take a little bit of time to get set up and show inside of podcasts. We also have 5G improvements like dual SIM and smart data mode. Also 5G international roaming enabled on supported carriers of iPhone 12. We have a redesigned News Plus tab that enables Apple News Plus subscribers to quickly find, download, and manage magazine and newspaper issues and a new search experience as well. For maps, we have the reporting features, which I've talked about a lot here on the channel and the ETA sharing as well for cycling or walking. For reminders, there's a couple of new features, option to print your reminder list and the ability to sort reminders by title, priority, due date, or creation date. Translation playback speed can be adjusted by long pressing the play button. We've shown that here as well on the channel. Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 controllers are now supported as well. We have Fitness Plus, the ability to stream that to the AirPlay 2 enabled devices like a TV or a Apple TV. So also CarPlay shows ETA in Apple Maps can be easily shared while driving with new Siri or keyboard controls. And then also down here, we have some bug fixes. So a lot of bug fixes here in iOS 14.5 and not even all of them are mentioned, but Apple does mention quite a few bug fixes here as well. So some of these include messages at the bottom of the thread may be hidden by the keyboard under certain circumstances. I've not had that one, but Deleted messages may still appear in spotlight search. That is a bug I have had before, and that's been fixed in 14.5. Messages may persistently fail to send texts in some threads. Mail would not load new emails for some users until restarting the device. Call blocking and identification section may not appear in phone settings. iCloud tabs may not appear in Safari. iCloud keychain could be prevented by turning off, or it could be prevented from turning off. Reminders created via Siri may be unintentionally set for early morning hours and then some you know issues with battery health as well which is why we got the recalibration feature for the iphone 11 series and then at the very bottom you can see some fixes for the airpods so airpods audio routing to incorrect devices for automatic switching and airpods automatic switching notifications might be missing or duplicated so both of those are things i've seen you guys comment on so thankfully those have been fixed here in 14.5 as you probably noticed throughout the beta stages if not they will be fixed in the rc build for sure so a lot of changes and bug fixes here in 14.5 and i think this is the biggest release for ios 14 since 14.0 i mean the most features the most bug fixes just overall the biggest update since ios 14.0 so that's why it took so long in the beta stages now as far as the performance performance feels about the same as beta 8 to me but compared to iOS 14.4, 14.4.1, and 14.4.2, it does feel smoother overall. And of course, it fixes up a lot of bugs that I and you guys also were having on those previous versions. Now, if we go into Geekbench here, you can see the scores I got. So this is the score I got on the RC build. So a 1599, so a very high single core score and a moderate 4079 multi-core. So you can see how this compares to previous versions. 1599 is, I believe, the highest I've had on this device, period. Uh, 1599, it ties something on January 21st, which is iOS 14.4. So very strong on the single core there, and the multi-core is pretty high as well. Not the highest, but it is a decent score there as well. But again, day-to-day -day usage, this feels great. And as far as battery life goes, of course, battery life, it seems about the same so far as Beta 8, but I've not been using it long enough to be able to tell. 
I will be doing a follow-up video on 14.5, the RC build, to see if anything has changed with the battery, just since that is most likely to change in the RC build versus going from beta to beta. So I will be testing that a little bit more extensively than I normally do to see if there is a change in battery life. So now when can we expect to see the final public release of iOS 14.5? And according to Apple, that is coming next week. So in their press releases published today after the event, you can see they mention next week for new software. So iOS 14.5 should come out exactly a week from today. I would expect 14.5 to get released to the public on April 27th. Now there is the possibility of the 26th or the 28th as well, but Apple loves Tuesdays. So I would expect the 27th and that's a little bit later than pretty much anybody was anticipating. A lot of people thought it would be, myself included, thought it would be the week before the final week of April. I did not think that Apple would wait until the very last week of April to release this, but here we are. So I guess it makes sense since there are new products that rely on the software and things like that. But still, it's you know kind of upsetting that we still have to wait another week for the public release, even though we've been waiting for months for it. But yeah, next week, we can expect to see that. And then after that, we should move on to maybe a 14.6 beta one. We'll have to wait and see. And then lastly, I did also want to quickly recap what Apple announced today. Now, if you guys were in my live stream when I live reacted to the event and you guys reacted as well, you already know all of this, but I just want to quickly recap everything real quick. So Apple actually recaps it right here on the front page of their website. But we did get a new M1 iMac. You can see it comes in all these colors. It does still have the chin, unfortunately, but it's really cool. We have Touch ID on it. It's really fast. It's 50% smaller in terms of volume versus the previous iMac. And it looks cool. I mean, it's not my style personally, but you know, it's nice. It starts at $1,300 and uh, it's going to be perfect for a lot of people. It is also the 24 inch and it has that 4.5K uh, retina display. So not a 5k display, not a 4k, 4.5k retina display. And of course has the best speakers, mics and camera ever in a Mac. And it does have that M1 chip. And then also we got the new iPad pro, which is actually powered by the M1 chip, not the A14X chip like everybody thought. So the 12.9 inch does have the liquid retina XDR display, which is the mini led display it has 5g. We have the ultra wide front facing camera with center stage, which is a feature I'll show you when I get my hands on the iPad Pro. So it comes in 11 and 12.9 inch. Only the 12.9 inch has that mini LED display, but it does have the M1 chip inside. So this thing is going to be insanely fast. And not to mention the pricing is very competitive at $799 for the 11 inch and $1099 for the 12.9 inch. Then also we got a purple iPhone 12. Nothing new, just a new color. It's a little bit more contrast, a little bit darker than the iPhone 11 that came in purple. I'm a fan, I will be getting that just to show you guys here on the channel. Then of course we did get AirTags as well. These are just $29 and it does have a easily replaceable battery that you can pick up at like a drugstore for five bucks, less than five bucks, and it you know goes bad after like a year. So the battery will last like a year. You can stick these somewhere and you will never lose anything again because it does run through the Find My Network and basically you can see everything in AR where your objects are. And then Apple did also announce a new Apple TV 4K with the A12 Bionic chip. And the best part is the new Siri remote. So the new remote, finally, that was one of my biggest gripes about the Apple TV previously, but we do have that new remote now, which will be nice. And you can also pick that up separately for $59. And like I said, I will go more in depth on all these products in a future video. And of course, when I get my hands on them as well, but Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 14.5, the RC build here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you find anything else new or what you're most excited for in 14.5. Just overall, let me know down in that comment below. And also, again, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when the iOS 14.5 public release comes out. And I will have a video that's probably going to be like 30 minutes because there are a lot of new features to cover in that video. And of course, subscribe for the new products that we'll be bringing you guys coverage of here on the channel very, very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.